there's a number of subjects where the question of who gets to make the final decisions uh, on what happens on the internet becomes relevant. It's relevant when it comes to illegal content, whether it is the discussion about child pornography or uh, violence or terrorism related issues, all the way to uh, what could be hate speech, how to deal with intellectual property rights uh, infringement, so-called piracy discussions, uh, and what is, what is an effective way to deal with it. So first of all, the e-commerce directive, as most of you certainly know, uh, contains several articles on the so-called liability regime. The objective is, is at least twofold. I mean, there are con sometimes conflicting interests to be reconciled. We clearly want the internal market for information society services uh, to work, and the whole e-commerce directive is meant to facilitate that. Uh, there are also lots of, of other interests and fundamental rights and different fundamental rights that are affected as well. Of course, internet and the digital transition at large uh, really are a, a, an area, a, a playing ground where self and co-regulation have a, a great role because the complexity, it, it impacts society in a such complex way and in such profound ways that I think we are in one of these areas where really nobody can predict exactly what is the exact impact of one measure and we all have to be resilient and adaptive. We are really in a transition management mode. The internet for us presents enormous opportunities, um, but it also presents significant challenges. It, for us, it's an amazing tool because it enables us to disseminate our music and our artists' music at a touch of a button. But at the same time, it enables other people who invest absolutely nothing in our business to um, profit from the wholesale theft of, of what our artists do. Our industry has changed, I think, further and faster than most any other business in the last 15 years in the digital economy. Policymakers need to understand the role of intermediaries in economic processes when designing new rules about internet intermediaries. If policymakers don't understand yet the complex role of internet intermediaries, it's too early to make far-reaching policies that bring such major societal and economic risks. It is very difficult to understand why we're gambling the future of the democratic value of the internet. It's very difficult to understand why we're gambling the future of the economic value of the internet. A balance needs to be struck, for example, between the need to protect children and the imposition of unacceptable levels of censorship and online scrutiny. Another such balance to be established is between the desire to provide ready access to information and intellectual property. We wouldn't wish to pretend that finding these balanced positions is or will be easy, whether they're to be achieved by self-regulation or imposed legislation, but we do believe that any argument that defends one single principle, whether it be complete freedom of access to everything all the time, or draconian levels of governance, while denying any validity in opposing points of view, is frankly naive and simplistic of people that come to us with genuine grievances, genuine complaints about genuinely bad action, genuinely criminal content in many cases, or stuff that inf does infringe on other people's rights. Oh, well, we're just talking about something that's not really a problem here, if there was any sense of that. And if anybody thinks, oh, well, this is copyright, and actually, to be honest, the copyright industries, they're doing fine, so we don't have to need to worry about that, then I ask you to set that aside, because the issue is much broader. The issue is, what do we do? about all this bad stuff. The need for um, formal regulation of the internet, uh, perhaps self-regulation is one way of keeping up with the uh, quick changes that are taking place because in the kind of environment of an organization like the Global Network Initiative, uh, challenges can be discussed, uh, resolution can be found, changes can be made not that easily, but much more easily than through the political process, and particularly the political process with 27 states that um, we're coping with in the EU.